Gosh, man, this video sucks. I hate this topic, but wow, do we have to talk about this. Now, I want to be very clear. Up front, here at the beginning of the video, we're not going out there and indicting whatever players are involved in this conversation. This is more so a direct responsibility of the teams that are involved and not the players themselves. It's not their faults. So, nobody should be going out there in the comments of their Instagrams and hating on these guys because they're not anybody else. Today, we're talking about the Edmonton Oilers and probably the biggest draft fumble that they exhibited back in the 2021 NHL Entry Draft. Now, we have talked about this at length a number of times because back in the 2021 draft, it was kind of a known thing that the Oilers were somewhat in need of a goaltender, quote unquote. They had some guys in the system and they had some guys up at the NHL level. I think that was the time of Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen, if my memory serves correctly. And there was this idea saying, hey, there's a really good goaltender available in the 2021 NHL draft, and he could be an absolute monster. He could be a franchise goaltender. His name was Jesper Wallstedt. And the problem with the Edmonton Oilers that everybody saw back in this time frame was that when the Oilers had themselves their own first round pick at the 20th overall spot, Edmonton had the opportunity to draft Jesper Wallstead. However, they did not end up doing that. Instead, the Oilers went from number 20th overall to number 22 overall because they traded down with the Minnesota Wild. Jesper Wallstead ended up going to Minnesota number 20th, and the Oilers acquired the 22nd pick, which they used to select Xavier Borgo, and the 90th overall pick, which they used to select Luka Munzenberger. Now, we've made multiple videos about this particular aspect of the draft, how the Oilers fumbled away the chance at getting a franchise goalie only for them to suck in net the next little while. They got Jack Campbell, he was not good, Stuart Skinner was bad to start out 2023-2024, it's okay now, but this was a pretty big deal because a franchise caliber goaltender, even if he wasn't a franchise guy, he still had that ceiling of being as good as he could be, was available. And the Oilers, directly ignoring a need of theirs, went out there and passed up the opportunity to draft him in exchange for Borgo and Munzenberger. Now, we've already made our few conversations known about the other guy. Luka Munzenberger isn't really anything to write home about. Now he's playing in the NCAA. He had three points in 30 games as a left-handed defenseman. Things are not looking all too great for Luka Munzenberger and his development. He hasn't produced any significant points since the draft. But Xavier Borgo, we have talked about him a few times over the years because as a player who is now in the Bakersfield Condor system, he's actually been pretty meh. 34 points in 62 games last year. This year, he had 17 points in 51 games played. So he actually has gotten worse, unfortunately. Borgo was a QMJHL beast. He could score goals. He can make plays. There was a lot of hype around Borgo, especially once the Oilers selected him, because, hey, Oilers fans have to pump up their own guy, especially their own first-round pick, right? It's just the idea of passing up on a franchise-caliber prospect, potentially, for Borgo and Munzenberger, that was seen as a really head-scratching move at the time of the draft. But what if I told you things have sort of gotten even worse? Because not only did the Edmonton Oilers take themselves a player who isn't really helping them out right now in Borgo, he's in the AHL, he's doing okay to mid if you want it to be nice, and Luka Munzenberger is in the NCAA doing his thing, which isn't really all too significant either, but it gets crazier when you acknowledge what happened yesterday for the Edmonton Oilers. Last night, the Dallas Stars whooped the Oilers behinds, a 5-0 Stars victory, and you saw yourselves goals from a whole bunch of guys, including one Wyatt Johnson. He had his 30th goal of the year. He also followed it up by getting his 31st assist of the year shortly after, putting his point total up to 61 gosh darn points. Wyatt Johnston isn't an NHL rookie. He already played for the Stars last year. He had 82 games played and 41 points, but this year he's on pace for about 65 points. I think he became the youngest Dallas Stars player in history to score 30 goals in a year. Something like that. He's only the second U21 player. 
In fact, here's a list posted by Big Head Hockey. Every 20-year-old player in the cap era who hit 30 goals. You have Ovechkin, Matthews, Crosby, Pasternak, Monahan, great player in Sean Monahan, McDavid, Malkin, Line, Kopitar, Evander Kane, Bergeron, Taves, and Stamkos, and now Wyatt Johnston. And he has been doing this as a third liner. Just wait until he gets pushed into the first power play unit as well. Now, when it comes to the fumble that we are referring to in the title of this video, NHL Meme Central went out there and tweeted this out. Never forget when the Oilers traded off the Wallstead pick and then took Xavier Borgo over Wyatt Johnston in 2021 LMAO. Oh, no! Oh no, the guy who just torched the Oilers last night was taking a pick after Borgo. Not only did the Oilers fumble away Jesper Wallstead by trading away that pick they could have used to get him, but they also took the inferior player whose following draft selection ended up being amazing. Now, I'm not going to go out there and dismiss Xavier Borgo. But I'm just saying, it's pretty rough for him right now. His point production in the AHL has gotten lower, Wyatt Johnston has more goals and assists in the NHL than Borgo has AHL points right now. It's looking very bad when you acknowledge how exactly the Oilers draft management went in the 2021 season. And even Thomas Drance goes out there and uses this argument to dispel some of the drama a little bit. He makes it a little easier to stomach. Here is the Thomas Drance reply in quotations. Look at the star selected right after the dud my favorite team's GM drafted is a fun form of fan self-loathing, but it's not useful for evaluating scouting performance. Doubly so in the COVID-impacted draft classes. Wyatt Johnston and Xavier Borgo combined to play 41 games in their draft years. And then the replies go out there and say, I mean, you cannot argue the fact that Dallas amateur scouting has been far superior to Edmonton's for a while now. This is just a shock value example. Dran says, no doubt. I'd suggest to you, however, that the biggest issue with Edmonton's recent draft record, especially in the first round, isn't the players they selected, but that made those picks in the first place. So I think what Drance is saying is it's more on the onus of the scouting staff to find out these opportunities for themselves rather than to take issue with the players, which I wanted to establish as well. Like, this is not a thing against Xavier Borgo. It's just saying, hey, the Oilers drafted him instead of some very notable talent. And if you look at their draft eligible years, 2020, 2021, Borgo played in the QMJHL. He had 40 points in 29 games played, 20 goals, 20 assists. He was good, especially coming off of another season where he was over a point per game. Meanwhile, for Wyatt Johnston, his draft eligible year saw him play zero games. He had four points in seven games for Team Canada at the U18s, but that was about it. In fact, most of the OHL guys, because they didn't play any hockey, only the top guys did. Like, Mason McTavish and Brendan Othman went to Europe and played over there. It bolstered their draft stock, but it was a really strange time. And a lot of these OHLers didn't have much scouting access, so many of these teams just kind of took their picks. They went off the board. They said, okay, well, we liked Wyatt Johnston from when we saw him two years ago, so let's take him. And now, they're reaping the benefits. But for Edmonton, this is always going to look really poorly when they look at the draft standings, when they look at the fact that they traded away the Jesper Wallstead draft pick and how they got two inferior players as a result. Furthermore, even so, when you look at how they didn't take one of the best U21 players in the league who went immediately after Borgo in Wyatt Johnston. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to the two Edmonton Oilers draft fumbles. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.